I'm Professor Aaron Mayer from the Department of Land of Israel Studies and Archaeology at Bar Ilan University. Our department is a very unique department because we study the history, culture, uh, geography of the land of Israel from earliest times till modern times, combining a whole slew of disciplines, history, archaeology, geography, biology, um, demography, and our students get a hands-on and a theoretical understanding of what this land is, who the peoples that lived in, in the land, who are the cultures, and they do this in a very interdisciplinary manner, and they do it with both classroom studies, with field trips, and archaeological excavations. In the last year, bar -Ilan University has also opened up a master's program for students from abroad who would like to come and study in the Land of Israel Studies and Archaeology Department, also in the Bible Department at bar -Ilan, and even combining the two, they can come study classes in English, participate in field trips in the summer, participate in excavations, and get a feeling of what this land is, who the people that lived here, and for those interested, for example, in the Bible, it's a way to understand how the Bible grew, what are the cultures in which the Bible was formed, and it's so much better to understand the Bible by being in the places where the events occurred, where the people who are mentioned lived, and see the sites, and see the landscape, and tangibly pick up the finds that are related to these periods than if you're just studying it back at home in a, in a theoretical setting. For the last 25 years, I've been directing the excavations at a site in Israel called Tel Asafi, which is identified as Philistine Gat. That's the famous Gat, the home of Goliath, one of the five major cities of the Philistines, well known from the Bible. And in fact, in the Bible, it plays a major role because that's the city where Goliath came from where he, and we, when he went to fight David. And that's the city where David ran away from Saul to Gat, to King Achish, King of Gat. And it plays a very, very substantial uh, part in the stories of the early uh, Israelite history. And the excavations of Tel Asafi have been a treasure trove of astounding finds for the last 25 years. And in addition to this, one of the things that makes the excavations at Tel Asafi exceptional is that we use the most up-to-date scientific methods for recording and for analysis. And we have been trailblazing in the way that we have brought into the field and into the lab the most sophisticated methods for analyzing the past. And in fact, we've brought together a toolkit that's comprised of traditional methods used in archaeology with the most cutting edge methods um, from all kinds of sciences to study the past. Because what we find from the past is very limited and if we want to understand the past deeper and a more comprehensive manner, we have to understand it as much from all kinds of directions using every type of analysis that we can possibly use and that's what we do in our excavations. One of the finds from the excavations of Tel Asafi is this unique vessel that I'm holding. This is a type of vessel that we call a beer jug. And this has been known from the Philistine culture for, for decades upon decades. And imagine that originally it had a, a high neck and some sort of a handle. But the unique aspect of it is it has, a, um, it has an opening which is basically uh, a spout with a strainer. And for many years, it was assumed that this is used for um, beer, that you pour the beer out, and then since the beer had a lot of um, residue in it, the, it gets stuck in the, in the strainer. But this could never be uh, proven. Recently, though, using modern science, we have shown this clearly. And what happened is we found this, this vessel complete, and we sent it to a microbiology laboratory and our colleagues there managed to isolate from within the matrix of the ceramic, from inside the vessel, uh, live yeast, which are remnants of the original yeast 
that was in this vessel when this vessel had beer in it. Now, we genetically identified this yeast as yeast that is very specific for uh, making beer. And then they grew the yeast and we reproduced beer from the yeast. And it was quite tasty. And so this was an opportunity is that modern science not only helps us understand this past, here we even tasted the past. And that's something very unique. Um, one of the things that we're doing in the documentation of our finds are three-dimensional scans and photographs of various objects. Now, why do we do this? This, first of all, enables us to make models, which you can then, on the screen, manipulate the, the object. And even if you can't be in the lab and hold it, you can actually watch the object uh, on the screen and see it from all directions. But even more cool than that, we have a, a 3D printer and when we want to recreate an object to get a feeling of what it originally was, and even if the object is not in our hands anymore, for example, it went to a museum, or we found it and we had to leave it at the site. So we can make a 3D model printed of the object, and then you can see what the object looks like. You can feel it, you can measure it in a way that was simply impossible up till now if you didn't have the actual physical object. This enables us to make scale models. In this case, it's slightly smaller, but we can make something exactly the same size to an accuracy of 0.1 millimeters. And it's a tool that's, again, a great combination of the abilities of taking modern science and utilizing it for the study of the past.